You are a powerful generation and God is using each of you mightily, unlike any previous generation. God is opening doors of opportunity for you to step through, to make an impact on a lost soul. The world is asking about you and longing for someone to share the truth with them. Do you hear their cries? It's not about your lack of skill, your lack of possession, or any of your insecurities. This is all about souls. Since the very first service, you could feel it was like lightning, was like thunder. In campus ministry, you're going to have ups and downs. Trust me, I've had them. I just encourage you to keep going because we've seen God is going to use you for His kingdom and for His glory. I started out walking on campus as a monster. just one person, it's worth every single bit of the sacrifice that we need to make. When God spoke, they believed it, they acted on it, and then the miraculous began to happen. What they dare, God was faithful to do. Dear brother and sister Buga and the foreign missions team, Greetings in the precious name of our Lord. This letter finds us packing to go to our new field of labor. Everything is working out fine, and Lord willing we will be leaving for New Orleans around the 14th, and will be sailing from there to San Juan, Puerto Rico. We'll sail on the SS Claiborne, our new Chevrolet, which Sheaves for Christ purchased for us is to arrive here February 4th, and we'll make some pictures for the Herald. Yours for Christ, Glenn and Rachel Smith, United Pentecostal Missionaries to Puerto Rico. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Discipleship Now is the platform that puts apostolic content into the palm of your hand. If we are ever going to make disciples, we have to be disciples. We have to discover a way to bring the teachings of the Bible beyond Sunday fellowship into our everyday lives. The wait is over. Access has never been easier. You can download our app on iOS and Android or access our channel on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. Learn more at discipleshipnow.com. Vamos e te adoramos por nossa escolha, por esse momento e por esse tempo. 
Senhor, perdoe-nos por nossos passados, por talvez não fazer a coisa certa no momento certo, mas hoje, Senhor, vamos começar a fazer diferente com a ajuda do Seu Espírito. Reconhecemos, Senhor, que somos nada sem Ti. Precisamos de Ti, Senhor Jesus. Somos completamente dependentes de Ti. Fala, Senhor, com essa direção. Estamos dispostos a sacrificar. Estamos prontos a render tudo por tua causa. Repreendemos qualquer mentira ou ataque do inimigo que talvez tentaria destruir a missão dessa direção. E, Senhor, oramos por uma liberação, um derramamento contínuo do seu Espírito Santo através desse mundo. Faça tua vontade em nós e também nesse mundo. Seja feito em nome de Jesus. Lord, thank you for this opportunity for all of us to gather together tonight. I know that we're not in person and we wanted to be in person, but we're connected virtually. Lord, I ask that you be with every single hyphen young adult that is watching this video right now, that they prepare their minds for this service tonight, Lord. And while we're preparing our minds for this service, Lord, I ask that you prepare our hearts and our spirits for what you want. Lord, I ask that your spirit be released throughout all of the world. Lord, I know that a lot of us were ready to go. We were ready to go globally. We were ready to go in North America to preach the gospel, to do whatever you needed for your kingdom work, for revival, Lord. And I know that we're all still waiting and willing to go. But Lord, I ask that you stir our hearts, that you, you rest upon us, and that you really allow us the opportunity to go and do your will across the world. Lord, I ask that you go with us, that your anointing rest upon us as we go among all the world and preach the gospel. Lord, I ask that your spirit released among all the world. Lord, and I ask that you be with us in this service tonight, that your anointing would rest upon us again and stay with us. Lord, that the message would not fall on deaf ears and that we would use it for your glory, for your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> لياتي ملكوتك لتكن مشيئتك كما في السماء كذلك على الارض يا ربنا يسوع نحن نسبحك ونشكرك من اجل نعمتك وبركاتك وخلصتك نشكرك اننا نعرف ان لا اله غيرك وانت اماننا وخلصنا وقواتنا اسمك يا يسوع هو برج قوي جدا احنا نطلب باسمك انك تدعو جيلنا لخدمتك نطلب منك دحن خاصة للاماكن صعبة نطلب منك فتح الابواب كل بلد والكل شعب وكل لغة لحق انجيلك ان احنا نصلي لجرعات وشجعات احنا نريد ان نحبك اكتر من الرحة والاستراح خلي كنزنا تكون سماويا وليس ارضيا نشكرك من الفرصة أن أعطي كل شيء في حياتنا شكرا من أجل الفرح والشرف الذي يجي من فقة كاملة والاستسلام كامل نسبهك ونشكرك نعطي كل المجد والشرف والتسبيح باسم يسوع المجيد والقدوس Our Father in heaven holy and hallowed is your name let your kingdom come and let your will be done as it is in heaven let it be on earth lord jesus we praise you and we thank you for your grace your blessing and your salvation we thank you that there we know there is no god but you and you are our salvation and our strength your name jesus is a strong tower we are asking in your name that you would call our generation to service. We are asking for you to anoint us for difficult places. We are asking for you to open the doors of every nation, every people group, and every language to the truth of the gospel. We pray for boldness and courage. We pray that we would love you more than comfort. We pray that our treasure would be heavenly and not earthly. We thank you for the opportunity to give you everything. We thank you for the privilege of complete surrender and total trust. We praise you and we thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus name. Hear, O Lord, 
the desperate cry of some of the greatest, most gifted, and anointed young people of the church age dispensation, increasingly passionate in their desire for a double portion of supernatural power from on high to proclaim the only saving gospel to a judgment bound and hell determined untoward generation with signs following. Lord, they are keenly aware of the challenges they are facing. They know very well that changing their communities, their cities, and their world requires the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost, not the fictional power depicted elsewhere, but the power thou, O Lord, promised if they would tarry in prayer until they were endued, filled, baptized, and imbibed, then daily refilled, reignited, reanointed to fulfill the purpose for which they have been called to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, and a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Uniting together in prayer, partnering and continuing in the apostles' doctrine, strategizing together their plans and programs to know how to better and more effectively reach their generation. They have been matched with this dreadful hour empower them release them to prevail may they emerge from hyphen young adult conference as a single voice released to their personal mission field that god planned for each of them and that thou O oh lord you are preparing the people that will be around them to receive the truth of the gospel of jesus christ may they then live in the expectation of miracles, signs, and wonders to be confirmed in their witnessing. We pray, Lord, that you would grant this generation in this closing evil day of time to be the greatest generation of the apostolic Jesus name, Holy Ghost revival since the day of Pentecost. It is in thy name, Jesus, the name that is above every name that can be named in heaven or in earth the only name given under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. Virtually, let all join me and say, Amen and Amen. Amen. I wonder if you would just take a moment right now to just thank God for his presence that's already here. God, we worship you. God, we praise you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit, Lord God, that's going to be on this service tonight. God, we've just come to worship your name. We've just come to lift you up tonight, Jesus, because you are great and greatly to be praised, oh God. Hallelujah. Just put your hands together with me tonight. Step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Or run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. And as like the weight has been lifted, oh, grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom, help me say now. Now where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is sealed, there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Oh, we declare freedom tonight in your presence. 
Jesus' name, oh, lives made whole and hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Oh, chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. And lives made whole and hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Let me hear you say, where there's, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. We declare freedom in this place tonight. Freedom from addiction. Freedom from fear. Freedom from doubt. Let there be freedom. Release it in this room. Oh, let there be freedom. Lord, for where your spirit is, there is freedom. Jesus, we're asking tonight that you would do what you are famous for, God. Do what you are famous for tonight, Jesus. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out your anointing on us. Yeah. Come on, would you just take a moment right now and say, God, let your presence flow in this place tonight. Whatever you want to do, we ask that you would do it in it and through us. Yeah, Lord, do what you are famous for. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, and make way through the waters. And walk me through the fire. And do what you are famous for. What you are famous for, shut the mouths of the lions, bring dry bones to life, eh? do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. There is no fear, cause I believe there is no doubt. Cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. Can anybody testify of that tonight? I have a hope 
found in your grace. I have a strength found in your grace, your faithfulness, my fortress over and over. And make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. I believe in you. And God, I believe in you. Release your love inside of me. Unleash your power for all to see. Spirit, come and fall on us over and over. Walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think. Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful. Your words unstoppable. All things are possible with you. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think. Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful. Your words unstoppable, and all things are possible with you. So make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lights, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for. What you are famous for, and I believe in you. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you, oh, oh, I believe in you, Jesus, I believe in you, oh, I believe in you, there is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. So do what you are famous for, Lord. Come on, would you just lift your hands and just pray for him to do what he's famous for tonight? Send your anointing, Jesus. Send your power, Jesus. Oh, Lord, do what you are famous for. Oh, send out your anointing, Lord. Let it fall fresh on us. Oh, let it fall fresh on us. 
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you so much to Brother Wilson for leading us in worship tonight. I was thinking while he was there leading probably what some of you were thinking whenever I pull my guitar out or instrument out. Um, sometimes I wish I could just play and sound like that in a room like Brother Wilson was doing. Longtime friend, powerful minister of the gospel. I would encourage anyone that has the ability to schedule preachers for your youth or your young adults to consider Brother Wilson. He is a powerful preacher, did a tremendous job at our general conference youth service this year. For those of you I've never had the privilege to meet personally, I hope that somehow our paths cross and we get the opportunity to know each other. I want to say thank you greatly to Dr. K, as I affectionately call her, Dr. Kristen Keller, and her exceptional work as our hyphen young adult director over these years. She has never ceased to lead with excellence, and I want to just continue that along beside her team, even in the challenges of COVID-19 and 2020. I saw some fun in the chats earlier, 2021 will be our year. No one expected this coming in, but you have rolled with the punches. You have battled beyond virtual fatigue, and I trust that your devotion is strong. I trust that your relationship with Jesus Christ is strong. We uh, honor you and we thank you for serving the kingdom of God. I want to turn your attention tonight to 1 Kings chapter 19, saying how thankful I am to be a part of this hyphen digital or virtual tour via Crowdcast. I'm thankful for the online platforms that we have to utilize. While we might be physically distanced, we are socially connected, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. While you're turning there, I want to tell you it has been my absolute honor and privilege, along with my beautiful and godly wife, Rachel, to serve as the national youth president. For those who are not aware, I have retired from this position and taken the pastorate in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I honor the great team there, Brother and Sister Ranking, Brother and Sister Thomas, uh, and our newly elected youth secretary joining the team, Brother Jeremy Stafford. I honor them and the amazing staff of Youth Ministries for all the hard work they do behind the scenes to make things like this happen working with the national hyphen team first kings chapter 19 i want to read you three very familiar portions of scripture i'm hoping that the fact you have heard these scriptures so many times over a period of years will keep you from checking out don't 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 stop don't tune out don't think i've heard this so many times if you'll stick with me i think i have something from the lord to share here tonight Verse 19, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. You know the story. And he left the oxen, Elisha did, and he ran after Elijah. And he said, let me, I pray thee, Kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said, go back again, for, for what have I done to thee? Verse 21, and he returned back from him. He took a yoke of oxen and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. I would, I would like to preach to you on this, this final session, this, this release tour, this, this opportunity we have digitally. My challenge to you, I would speak in the form of my assignment, release, release the Elisha mentality. Release the Elisha mentality. I want you to pray. 
I want us to treat this as some sense of normal standard right where you're at. Come on, if you're eating Fruit Loops, I want you to stop. If you're, if you're, you know, in the middle of, of chomping on some nachos, I want you to chill out. Give me the next 30 minutes or so. But right now, I want you to start it with prayer. By the authority of the Word of God and the power of the name of Jesus Christ, that mighty and matchless name that is above every other name that has ever been uttered in this world. I pray that you would do a spectacular, a seismic work in the life of every young adult and every young adult leader that is tuned in right now. I believe the word you have for me to share is challenging, but I'm asking you to help me to speak with wisdom. Help me to speak precisely. I don't want to preach a message full of cliches. I want to bear my heart and somehow deliver what you have laid on me for this generation of young adults. I'm asking that they would be not only hearers, but that they would be genuine recipients of the word. Anoint me to be able to speak it, but anoint them to be able to hear it. I pray it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Release that Elisha mentality. The Wright brothers often credited for that first sustained flight that took place of the Wright Flyer in December of 1903, just outside of Kitty Hawk. They, uh, they would soon turn this incredible, I guess, invention that they had been working so hard on to, they would begin to turn this into something more than just a for them. Something more than just a Saturday playtime expedition. In fact, their development of the aircraft was bought by the military and that official test flight that took place with a sustained flight of over an hour there at Fort Myer. They, they wheeled that first aircraft with uh, not only Oliver, but also that lieutenant that got in with him. And, and there they from the hangar to the to the launch pad. They utilized a counterweight. If you've never watched the video, it's it's quite intriguing to watch as they lift a counterweight up in this tower and it's strapped to the front of the plane through the tying mechanism. And as as the weight is dropped, the counterweight is dropped, then that 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 plane by the effect of that counterweight being dropped, it speeds forward down this track. It is inducing or creating this seemingly kinetic energy that is going to create the liftoff help for this, this first real sustained flight. It lasted, as I said, for over an hour, but it started this brilliant moment that would take the, the, the video recording evidence that would shock the world. This was started with a counterweight being applied. I want to tell you that, that this was not their first day dreaming about flying. The, the 1903 outside of Kitty Hawk or, or this, this, this flight on 1909, the, the, these years in between, these were not, these were not their first dreams. But for years, their hands had been bearing the marks, the, the grease under the fingernails, the, 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 the calluses on the insides of their hands and their palms, the, the etching that had been worked into them as they meticulously had been tinkering around on presses and on machinery and on bicycles where they would later attribute the, the thought process of the airplane itself and how development could actually begin to work, but they would be tinkering and they would be dreaming. Their hands were busy in that shop there in Ohio and they were, they were working meticulously, but never satisfied with where they were. However, I will tell you that simply because they were not satisfied with what they were doing as their future outcome, they did not stop the hard work of the day to day. They dreamed and they worked. They dreamed 
and they worked. They released faith and they worked. They believed and they worked. I cannot over articulate that enough. Until you can release the dream as an actual reality to get mingled with faith in your spirit, then there is no reason to work hard to try to bring something to fruition or make it come to pass. But I will tell you, because they thought it was more than just a dream, it was something that they wanted to be involved in. They spent the day after day after day after month after month, after year, after year, reaching for this mark, reaching for this goal. I'm emphasizing these words slowly and intentionally because I need to tell some young adult at the very beginning of this message that just because the dream has not yet been materialized does not mean that you need to cash in and cash out and stop working now. If anything, this is your opportunity to get your hand back to work, to get yourself reconnected to the overarching mission and dream of your life. Your great days cannot be viewed in the rearview mirror of your life, but I would tell you your greatest days are right now. In spite of COVID, in spite of sickness, in spite of virtual meetings, Meetings, your greatest day to be a soul winner is right now. Your greatest day to be a minister of the gospel is right now. Your greatest day to bring flight to a dream is right now. While we might look back and give some credit to, to the Wright brothers and others might want to debate it in the whole debate about air flight, here's what I will say. Of all the hundreds, if not thousands of planes I've jumped on, I'm thanking God that there was a day when they got sustained flight that hovered only around 100 to 150 feet. And that flight started after a flight that had taken off and bounced about three or four times. And, and then a flight that took a short flight and then it crashed and it burned. I'm thankful when it just skidded that they did not stop building and tinkering with the bicycles and the machinery and the press. I'm, I'm thankful when they had that flight that took off for a while and then it seemed like it was a crash and burn, that the fact they crashed and burned did not make them give up on what they knew they were destined to do. You cannot give up because we've hit a tough year. You cannot give up because you've had a tough year at your job or in your family or a tough season, even in your mind. Can I tell you as a pastor, just dealing with people that have been battling COVID. One of the one of the greatest side effects that no one is talking about is the mental struggle of people that are dealing with COVID, whether it be the chemical change that they're dealing with or whether it be the isolation while they are there in a hospital bed. And I've reminded many people that if God is for us, then no one or no thing that tries to be against us can conquer. And so I'm telling some young adult again at the beginning of this message. I'm not asking if you're flying yet. I'm asking if your hands are dirty. Do you have grease under your nails? Do you do you have your hands applied to work? Or in our terminology, I know that everything's not perfect, but do you have your face in the text? And, and do you have fresh highlights in the scripture? Do you have fresh notes in your journal? Do you have the names of those you're reaching for? Do you have the cell numbers of those you're calling and you're after? Are you still working to see flight? I'm, I'm not asking if your family has all been back baptized yet. I'm asking if you're working to that end. I'm, I'm not asking if all your co-workers have been baptized yet. I'm asking, are you working toward that end? Can you see in your mind? Can you see the wind in your hair? Can you see the goggles on your eyes? Can you, can you see yourself soaring? I recognize the enemy wants you to be overwhelmed with the fact that you are crashing or you're bouncing or you're burned. I want, I want you to 
not be intimidated by all of the naysayers like the Wright brothers had to deal with. It's not designed for you to fly. Man should never get up off the ground. You, you need to stop acting reckless. I'm telling you, we need to get to that release mentality. And one of the things we need to do is release our faith to mix with our dreams. And one of the only ways we can do it is to release from our ears and from our minds all of the naysayers. All of the people who don't make you feel like you're good enough, like you're strong enough, like you're talented enough, like you've got enough ability. I'm telling you, you got to release that from your mind, release it from your spirit and allow God to speak. My God, I feel like that like somebody needs a fresh baptism of this right now. You need to release that from your mind. It's not the will of God that you would deal with some person who in their own life, they don't want to soar. They don't want to do anything great. And so living through you and trying to tear you you down. It's really how they feel about themselves and they want to keep you from being less. I'm talking to the worship leader that wants to be great. I'm talking to the young adult that's been called to missions and you've still not done anything with it. I'm talking to the young adult that's supposed to be a doctor and you've settled to be something much lesser. I'm, I'm talking to the ones that are supposed to be soaring, but you have refused because of the naysayers or because of the bouncing or the crashing or the, I'm telling you, release faith, release the dream and release from your ears and from your mind the naysayers in your life. Now, we got to treat this like we're together right now. I want you to throw your hands towards heaven, if you will. And I want you to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And I, I want you to just go ahead and do that right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I pray that you'd release on our minds, oh God, this, this onslaught of attack from naysayers. Let it be released out of our psyche. Let it be released from us. You're never going to fly, boys. You're never going to really get this thing off the ground. I'm not interested in who says that this generation of young adults does not want to be apostolic. You can be creative and apostolic. Yeah, I'm going to let that sink in for a second. You can be a designer and apostolic. You can be a photographer and a powerful God-ordained minister through the lens of a camera. You, you can be the greatest Sunday school teacher that this world has ever seen. But to do it, you're probably not going to be able to do it the way it's been done for the last 30, 40, 50 years in your church. You're probably going to have to take some new, fresh ingenuity and get this thing off the ground. You can be creative and apostolic. You can be modern and apostolic. We are not cashing in our doctrine. Anybody who knows me at all, anybody who believes in my ministry at all, knows that I believe in the apostolic doctrine. I believe in clinging to the word of God. So don't you try to mix my words and I don't think you will. But I don't think just because we're apostolic means that we cannot press for greatness in our generation. In fact, I will tell you that the elders are looking for you. They are waiting for you to step up to the plate. They're waiting for you to step up to the plate. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. What started with those Wright brothers a hundred plus years ago, now we've got Hyphens, young adults, your age, they're flying our military's multi-million dollar machinery. And yes, I think that if they're qualified to fly those, I think that you're qualified to be a soul winner in your local assembly. I think you're qualified and of age to be preaching. Some of you on here that discredit yourself by your age, may I remind you that if you are a young adult in the United Pentecostal Church, that you would be a peer to Jesus Christ during his ministry on earth? Uh-huh. You would be in his peer bracket. When he began to do those works, when he began to walk among the men, he's taken from us in his early 30s. You are there. The time is right now for you to step out from what you have been and step beyond the excuses. And one thing you've got to release is yourself. You've got to release the excuses. Just like you've got to release the dream. You've got to release the excuses. Yeah, I told you you've got to release the naysayers. And I was setting 
setting you up for this right now because at some point you got to release your own excuses. You got to release your own insecurities. Quit saying you're an introvert. It doesn't matter that you're an introvert. You're anointed and full of the Holy Ghost. Quit saying that you're more of just a, a study. You're more of a behind the scenes. If you're behind the scenes, then you'd be the most anointed behind the scenes person that this generation has ever seen before. If you're a person that's meant to preach, then don't preach like anybody else. Don't you preach like me. Don't you preach like leaders of days gone by. You dig out what God has called you to do. But if you're a nurse, by God, you need to accept that that is the call of God on your life and you're anointed to do it and you be the greatest, most powerful, most anointed nurse that this world has ever seen. If you're an entrepreneur trying to get a job downtown in one of our metropolitan areas where we have tens of millions that are dying and going to hell while you're climbing up some financial ladder. Don't you leave souls on the lower rung thinking that if you make enough money, you'll be satisfied. I curse that lie to hell. And I tell you that you've got to release the excuses. Well, well, I, I'm really not meant to be a preacher. If you've got breath in your lungs, you're a preacher on some level. And to those in your world, I'm going to take this a step further. To those in your world, you are hell's most hated preacher. Uh-huh. For your backslidden family, you are hell's most hated preacher. For your friends that you're in close contact with, you are hell's most hated preacher. Well, you've never held a microphone. You've never stepped onto the platform. You've never been behind a podium. No, but every morning that you wake up and you draw breath into your lungs and you recognize again, his mercies are renewed every day. It's like another day in the shop of your life, recognizing I got to get this thing off the ground. Because no matter what I do, I've got to be released for the kingdom. For the ki kingdom. For the kingdom. Dr. Keller can tell you that I have been passionate since the launch of Hyphen Young Adult Ministry. I'm concluding my time in youth ministry, I guess, on some level, as far as that being my full time role after 20 years. This year, So yeah, I've been doing youth ministry for a long time and I'm not trying to qualify my years. I'm just trying to tell you this from the beginning of the launch of the hyphen young adult ministry. And Dr. Keller can tell you, maybe she can give me a witness in the chat right here. I've been on the sideline cheering and prompting and promoting and telling her we can do it. Let's gather our young adults. I do not believe and have not believed that our young adults should be a silent group in our churches that they get to 18, 19, and then we lose them because there's no place for them to belong. We, we have to lose them to the church and we have to fall into some national statistic that you'll denounce your faith and walk away from who you are and what. I don't believe in that and I haven't for years, but we have watched and thanks be to God because of hard work, because of creativity, because of ingenuity, and more than anything, because of the manifold, manifest blessings of God. We have seen a resurgence and a growth of the young adult demographic within our churches. We have watched it. We have watched this group grow and soar and begin to thrive, not in one or two, not in a couple of large churches. Get that out of your mind. It's in churches all over, not just North America, all all over the world, there has been an uprising of young adults. Our retention is not the problem. Our retention is not the issue. Our issue is that we have been excited to create young adult ministries. And like we used to get comfortable in youth ministry, now we've gotten comfortable in young adult ministry. But I've got a word from God for somebody. It's time to release into the ministry that God has called our generation to. You are a young adult that has been divinely appointed by God in all of his infinite wisdom. In all of the infinite wisdom of God, he picked you for this season. Think about that. He picked you. He picked this IT generation for COVID. He picked you. This generation that could get the gospel around the world via the internet. He saved COVID for you. When he has never, he has never more perfectly positioned a generation of young adults to get involved in the ministry. I want you to throw your hands towards heaven and I want you to begin to pray a releasing prayer. I want you to pray it over your mind. I want you to pray.
Come on, if you don't know how to pray, you can repeat after me. God, help me to release from held hostage. Help me to release from being held hostage. Release, oh God, into ministry. I release, oh God, into what you have for me. It is the story. It is the story that we have all heard since we were teens. May I dare say even preteens. It is the story of Elijah and Elisha. It is this story in 1 Kings chapter 19 that we have so vividly rehearsed that we we have preached it over and over. How many of you, how many of you have sat in a youth camp where it was preached? You know you have. Youth Congress where it was preached, you know you have. Local church services where it was preached. And some of you that teach and preach, you have done it yourself. You have preached it or taught it multiple times yourself. Let's talk about this son of Shaphat. Remembering that when Elijah was given the commission, the commission to anoint Elisha, it came when he had been on the run from Jezebel. After he had just seen the great defeating of the, of the prophets, there they were, the prophets that, that were slain, and then yet word gets back from Jezebel that Elijah is going to be destroyed. And he runs, he leaves his servant, he isolates. You can always tell when you're getting into isolation, when you start leaving the people that are close and help serve you. You know it's not from God when you start running towards depression instead of running away from it. He runs and thank God that, that God's mercy finds him where it does. And, and you got to travel with the story. And I don't have time to thoroughly flesh it out. But I want you to understand something here. When the dust begins to settle all of a sudden through a multitude of scenarios, through the fire and through the wind and through the earthquake, there's these great seismic events. But then the still, small voice of God. And that still small voice begins to challenge and begins to speak. And the world has been throwing these dramatic things at us. Earthquakes, fires, and devastation, and wind, and hurricanes. My question is, can you hear the voice of God? Because the Bible says he was not in the wind. And he was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. No, 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 no. He was the still small voice. And I would tell you that it's hard to hear God or to recognize in the middle of the chaos. If you cannot tune in through the chaos to recognize the voice of God. Young adults, the days of us begging you to pray should be over. The days of us begging you to fast should be over. The days of us trying to convince you to live for God. Really? You're a young adult and we're still, your pastor's still convinced. No, those days are over. We got to be in a place now. You, you, young adult, you. Or even in the middle of all the chaos. If nobody else knows where he is. Even in the midst of all the chaos, you're the young adult that says, I hear the still, small voice of God. I hear him giving direction. He begins to give Elijah direction of what's next. He begins to tell him about the anointing of Jehu, the anointing of, of Haziel, and the anointing of Elisha. Haziel's going to be a king and, and Jehu's going to be a king. This is what God is telling Elijah. They're going to be kings, but Elisha is going to be your successor. <clears throat> He's going to replace you. Follow the story forward. Elijah doesn't run to Haziel. Elijah doesn't run to Jehu. Elijah heads for Elisha. And when God spoke to him, he told him, Elisha, the son of Shaphat. He said, that's who I want you to find. And so that's who he went after. Not just any Elisha. Elisha, the son of Shaphat. And he goes and finds him in the field. There's 12 yoke of oxen speaking to the prominence of the position. Speaking probably to the wealth of the family. Not one yoke working some small field. 12 Yoke of oxen. There's 24 ox out there in that field. 
But when he comes close enough to him, he casts that mantle or lays that mantle. And immediately Elisha runs it. Come on, you know the story. You heard it at camp. You heard it at conference. You heard it. You preached it. You taught it. You know it. He runs after him. Let me kiss my mom and my dad. I, I, I want to come after you. And Elijah says, what have, I, what have I done to you? But he goes back and he takes a yoke. He takes a pair. Got to understand, we looked at 12 yoke of oxen. And if you've never thought of it, you need to also look at the symbolism that's represented there. It's 12 yoke of oxen, which means these oxen are bound together. The lead oxen and the novice oxen, that have been pla they have been placed together in the way that they would trudge. But the fact that here comes Elisha running back, yes, he kills two of them. He slays, he slays one yoke of oxen, two different ox. They are, they are destroyed. And he boils them and the instrument. These yokes that had been a part of his every day showed what he himself was also yoked to. Uh, I don't think Elisha ever put his head through one of the yokes. I don't think Elisha ever got in there. He was the master over it. But those yokes, he knew them. He could, he could tell you every part of that yoke with his eyes closed. He knew where they needed to go on. He, he could look at that field and tell you which ox was a lead ox and which ox was a novice. He knew which one was supposed to lead from the right and which one was supposed to be positioned on the left. And it shows that not only is he well working his field, he is a hard worker. When Elijah finds him, yes, he's working. But the symbolism of the yoke speaks to the way he is so intricately bound to that role. But in a moment, in a moment, in one touch of the madness, how many illustrations have you seen where someone brings a piece of cloth or a man in one moment? He's ready to walk away from everything. He goes back, he destroys, he begins to feed, he begins to feast, and then he begins to tirelessly, tirelessly follow after Elijah. Go ahead, Pastor Carson. I've heard I've heard this talk. And preached about a thousand times what well, I know. Okay, so this is the point where I say I want a double portion. No, I'm, I hope I can mess with your mind a little bit. This is the moment where I tell you to release the Elisha mentality. For the last 15 years of your life, every time you hear the story, you make yourself Elisha. I'm preaching to you. You're not Elisha anymore. You're not the kid. You're the young adult. You're the one who's supposed to be carrying a mantle of their own. My God, you're the one. You're the one that's supposed to be preaching our conferences. You're the one. You're the one that's supposed to be preaching to our kids, leading us, leading us in ministry, leading us in missions, leading us in business. Well, the elders won't release us. Well, I'm one of the elders that gets a chance. And I'm telling you, I can't release you if you won't release the Elisha mentality. And stop thinking you're the little kid grasping for straws and grasping for an opportunity. Come on, you're 24, 25, 30 years old. You're Elijah now. Release the mentality that you're the kid that still needs animal crackers and, and fruit. I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm not here to be heat up on you. I'm here to get you out of that yoke. I'm here to I'm here to tell you if you're going to be yoked, yoked with anybody, let it be with your pastor. But run forward till the field work the crop. See it done. You're a young adult. You're not Elisha that he should have to be coming and checking up on and calling and checking up on and figuring out why you didn't make it to prayer and why you weren't at service. And You don't want to be Elisha at your job. Come on, some of you have been teaching for 15 years already. Some of you have been teaching for 10 years, 12 years. Some of you have been preaching for 15. You've been doing this a long time. 
Some of you young adult leaders, I'm here to tell you right now, some of you young adults that are even just entering into this, the days of waiting and trying to be an Elisha, those days are behind you. Those days are behind us. So I ask you a question, and it's a sobering question. But it's a question, I think, deposited in my heart from God. And I'm going to do my best to articulate and get it out of my mouth. And I'm going to ask it in the form of a question. Who wants your mantle? Yeah, I know that's sobering. I, I I understand that that's hard and that's heavy and that's challenging. And I recognize some of you thinking, wait a minute, what are you talking about? My mantle. I'm asking you, who's following you? If we're not careful, we are so constantly dreaming about taking flight that we never recognize we're off the air. I've flown so much over the years, I have a vivid memory of thinking that we were taking off. I had fell asleep in the taxi. I was exhausted getting on the plane. And I was thinking we were taking off and I had fallen asleep at the beginning and we were actually already touching down. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid if we're not careful and we don't wake up to this release call right now, you're going to miss the flight. You're going to wake up and be 40 years old. You're going to wake up and be 50. You're going to wake up and the best years of your life are behind you. The days you had to start an apostolic business will have been behind you. The days that you had to be mentoring some teenagers will be behind you. The days that you had to be multiplying yourself and somebody following you is going to be behind you. So I'm pleading with you on behalf of the kingdom to re- Release the Elisha mentality. You're not the kid in the corner. You're not the infant that's just trying to get started. You're not the 12-year-old walking into the youth group. You're not the 16-year-old barely getting their license. No, you're the young adult of the apostolic church. This is your day. This is your hour. We want you to preach in our pulpits. We want you to hold the conferences. We want you to dream up virtual meetings where six, seven hundred people get online. We want you. We want you. We want you to release the Elisha mentality. So I ask you that question. Who wants your mantle? Who? Hear me. I'm going to get close. Close enough, you can see the sweat. You know I'm giving it everything. I'm trying with everything to reach for you. If I could reach through the screen, I would. Who, when they hear you pray, wishes they could have that mantle of prayer? Who, when they watch you worship, wishes that mantle of worship would fall on them? Who, when they watch you sing, wishes that the anointing that drips down off of your head could somehow drip down onto them. Who's following you? You do recognize, right, that Elijah had to intentionally create that moment. He had to intentionally, by following the word and the will of God, intentionally create that moment with Elisha where Elisha could make his choice to follow. There's some 15-year-olds in your church that don't want it. They will not follow. There's some 16-year-olds that they, they're just not mature enough. They don't want it. But I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, young adult. I'm talking to the young adult, Elijah, that will listen right now. There's some teenager that's not old enough to be on this call. They're in their bedroom right now at this Bible. And they don't have to teach a Sunday school class tomorrow. They don't have anywhere to preach. They just got their oxen yoked up. (coughs) They're just standing in a field. And they're waiting on a light. Oh, throw your hands towards heaven right where you're at. Begin to pray. (coughs) God help us. God help us. God help us. I know. I know we've been trapped in this Elisha mentality for a long time. 
and I've preached it to you for years. And I've wanted you to be Elisha. I've wanted you to want a double portion. And I'm asking you to release it. Release the Elisha mentality that you're the kid and that the best things are ahead. And if you could just be a if you could just be a little closer to the pastor or a little closer to the preacher, or if your last name was just a little bit different, I'm asking you to release that and start recognizing that you're the one that's annoying. You're the leader that's annoying. The time for you is now to find some young person. Begin to allow the mantle to fall from you to the other. I honor you. I bless you. I feel released in my spirit that I have released to you what the Lord has placed on me. I'm asking that you would take this to prayer. I'm asking that you would consider this. That you would stop having to be a coddled young adult. And that you would be an absolute apostolic leader that carries a mantle and looks for an opportunity to multiply and anoint and produce another generation of apostolic leaders. God bless you. Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right where you are, can you just pray? God, help us to be willing to invest. You're following us. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us. Help us to somehow get a glimpse of the way you see us, God. There's young adults that have been on the verge of giving in and they don't know that they're actually supposed to be in the position for it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I am almost In the name of Jesus. Hi, friends, wherever you're watching this, don't let this moment pass you by. If you're by yourself, God is with you. If you're in a group, Maybe you're that older hyphen that's in a group right now. Find that younger hyphen that's there. I know we have to social distance, link up how best you can. Even if it's just to be in close proximity. This has been a word that is so direct to each and every one of us tonight. I know I can't see you, but I feel in my spirit not to rush this moment. <laughs> Maybe you're making that commitment that God I've been the one that's had to be dragged to prayer. I've been the one that my leaders had to ask, why weren't you at church? Or why do you miss it for school? Or why do you miss it for work? And maybe you're realizing tonight that you're the one that's got to make that commitment. If nothing else, for the generation that's following you, they see your every move. They see your every post. They see your every comment. They see your worship. They see you and all that you do. 
God, you're so faithful. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for your word tonight. Help us to be the examples that you've called us to be. Help us to be the leaders that you've called us to be. Help us to make the decisions that we have been putting off because it's just so hard. To make the commitments that we have slacked in. To be the generation you've called us to be. You chose us for this year. That means you trusted us with it. How much more should we trust you? In the name of Jesus, cover every hyphen young adult right now. Those that have battled with loneliness and isolation, those that have battled with feelings of insecurity because of singleness, God, you have a purpose, if for nothing else, for them to be an example of trusting you in the waiting, of trusting your promises. Even if they don't come right when we desire them to come, Lord. To be the examples you've called us to be. Thank you for this word tonight that is alive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We can't make the world wait on us any longer we can't make the next generation wait on us to get it together we have heard a word from the lord tonight (laughs) maybe it's time to tighten up the bootstraps get the belt of truth secured a little tighter (laughs) get the helmet of salvation back covering our minds the breastplate of righteousness covering our hearts get faith activated get that shield blocking every fiery dart of the enemy get the sword in our hand and go to war for the lost souls in our worlds and for the teenagers that are watching us and for the elders that trust us and the pastors who believe in us (laughs) It's time to fight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're praying, please continue to pray. This has been an incredible conference. I want to say a huge thank you to our youth ministry executives, Pastor Josh Carson, for speaking to us tonight. Justin Rankin and Michael Thomas hyphen has been so blessed under their leadership and we know there's a lot of transition right now and we're just so thankful for apostolic leaders to help lead the team that leads this generation to all of our session speakers and our worship leader for this event we're so grateful i want to say thank you to the national hyphen leadership team this conference was possible because of their hard work and dedication to impacting hyphens around the world and creating a platform for us to hear things like we heard tonight and feel what we have felt tonight. I want to give a shout out to the team, Dinah Koppel, Joshua Hanks, Philip Harding, Jen Malik, Matthias Newman, Kelvin Shaw, and Evan Zenobia. <laughs> Thank you for serving the hyphen generation so well. It's a privilege to have served alongside of you in preparing this event for the purpose of young adults being released. And I truly believe that that has happened here tonight. I want to give a huge shout out to our social media winners, and we'll be reaching out to you on social media to get your address and send you our hyphen merch bundle. Our winners are Jocelyn Garcia, Jay Marie, and Vivi. So congratulations. You'll get your hyphen merch bundle and be able to represent hyphens as you go into all the earth and preach the gospel with your words and with your life and with your social media. So thank you for being a part of that contest and I hope you enjoy what you have won. It's sad to say goodbye. So instead I'm gonna say see you soon at North American Youth Congress. 
and hyphen split ses sessions. And trust me, you don't want to miss them because what's so amazing is what I know that we have felt, what we have felt tonight at NAYC, we're going to get to feel that together and be together in person. And that's going to be wonderful. Make plans to be there. Stop by the hyphen booth, get some products, take some pictures, just hang out with the hyphens that are there. It's going to be amazing. Hyphen Generation, it's been wonderful to spend release with you this weekend. And most importantly, it's been amazing to see what God has released in us. And I truly believe the best is yet to come. If he trusted us with 2020, then what in the world will he do with us in 2021? Stay in the church, stand for truth, be released into all that God has for you and your life in Jesus name. Thank you for being a part of this conference. Watch our social media for how you'll be able to access these sessions. Listen to them again, get them in your spirit. Thank you, Pastor Carson. I am forever changed from that word tonight in Jesus name. God bless you. And thank you for being a part of Release 2020.